If you haven't watched my video already of how to think fast and talk smart, then go ahead, check that out. I'll put it in the description. But I have been getting more traction of that video than ever, and it's about verbal fluency. If you don't know what verbal fluency is, in short, it's the speed in which you can retrieve a word or idea in your head and then go ahead and verbalize it. If people want to know how do I increase my verbal fluency, some people are a little bit worried because their score was severely low. I had people message me, especially during the last two weeks of, hey, look, I'm trying to increase my verbal fluency in this time period, in this chaos. How do I go about doing that? Now, of course, I have my one-on-one -on -one coaching and I'll put that link down below if you're interested in that, but there are practical ways on doing this. And I've mentioned this in other videos as well, but you do have to put in the work <laughs> There's no magic pill, you do have to practice. So I have three practical exercises that you can do and you should go through before you even book a call with me. I really think that for most people, for most problems, it'll be solved by doing these three practical exercises. I'm gonna go in order of difficulty with number one, which is doing the FAS exercise. Basically, go back to my video that I did in the first place of how to think fast and talk smart and go over the exercise of retrieving the words, right? So retrieving the F words, retrieving the A word, and retrieving the S word. And before you try to do other letters, I do want you to concentrate on F A. S. And there's a reason why specifically it's those letters. Now, after which points you can toy around with different letters, but I want you to start with FAS. Now, I recommend doing the FAS exercise on a daily basis. I had some people comment in the YouTube video of, look, I've been doing this for three days straight and there's no improvement. Yes, of course there's no improvement in three days. You're not gonna see improvement in three days. You have to think about this in terms of weeks, in terms of months. This isn't something, it's just like going to the gym in which you can't just expect to have a six pack in three days. That's not how that works. You got to put in your time, you got to put in the effort and you have to be consistent. That is the easiest thing to do is the FAS exercise. It takes less than four minutes to do every day just to tally everything and actually do FANS. Four minutes. If you don't have four minutes in your day, then you, you don't have time to improve your verbal fluency. So the next step above that is reading out loud. This is something that back in the day, 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, it was a common phenomenon, or I guess not a phenomenon, but it was a common exercise for humans to read out loud, whether it was in school or even at home, because you would read to your friends, you would read to your family, and it was just something that people did. But nowadays, nobody really reads out loud. If anything, we tend to watch videos instead of reading, let alone reading out loud. What's great about this is it does two different things. Number one, it gives you new words. Presumably, you're reading, let's say, this is implied, I just had to hear, but <laughs> Michelle Obama's book, Becoming, and I'm reading a passage. The crime bill had failed to pass the state legislature. And then in my head, I'm like, oh, wait, I said that word weird, legislature. Okay, it's les legislator. Legis legislature. Le legislature. Legislator. Legislator. Okay, let me read back. The crime bill had failed to pass the state legislator, losing by five votes. I just trained myself right now. This is not, I, I, I promise you, this is not even planned. I just corrected myself. And now the next time I say legislator, I am way more confident in saying it, not only saying it, but now it's stored in my memory bank. Because part of verbal fluency isn't just getting the words out of your mouth. Part of it is that you not only understand and know a lot of words, but you're used to hearing it out of your own mouth instead of attaching it to somebody who would use that word. It's funny because I used to hate reading out loud in school <laughs> just because it was really hard for me to read out loud, especially if you're a foreigner like me and you have a slight accent. I tend to fumble upon my words, 
but all the more reason to read out loud. And if you don't remember what you read, which oftentimes happens when you're trying to articulate and you're not used to articulating and you go back to it, you keep reading the same sentence until you get it, until you say it right, until you really feel like you got it and then you move on. So you don't give yourself that leeway or that chance to just keep going, just keep moving. What often happens is even when we watch a video, it's very easy for us to keep watching instead of, wait, I don't understand that word she just said or he just said, let me pause this video and let me Google the word. Oftentimes we'll just keep watching if we just get the gist of everything. We do the same thing for reading, but when you read out loud, it becomes very obvious when you're not used to that word or you're not comfortable with a certain word or a certain phrase, it becomes very very obvious because you can hear it and and you can feel it when you're saying it that whoa I'm, I'm not really comfortable at saying this word I'm not comfortable at saying legislator it, it, it's very obvious it can be very time-consuming or it can be a mere five minutes a day again a mere five minutes a day what I just did right now and I did that every day that will compound and again I'm not talking about three days I'm talking about over the course of weeks your verbal fluency, go back to the FAS test, it's going to improve. I can't imagine it not improving just by doing that. Now, level three. <laughs> you wanna go to that next level, level three, because you're just the kind of person who just wants to go all in and all out. Vlogging. Why do I want you to vlog? There's a reason for this. Number one, is for some people, a lot of people, they get nervous in front of the camera, they get nervous in front of the lens because they feel like they have to say something very important. And oftentimes when we're talking about verbal fluency, it gets worse when we're under stress. So I want to pe put people under stress. I want to train you to not fall under pressure because that's when your verbal fluency is really tested and that's when you need it the most. When there's a office politics situation happening and you have to stand up for yourself and you can't think of the word right then and there, that's when you become lower in, let's say, the dominance hierarchy or the social hierarchy in that group. It doesn't matter whether it's at work or out in the social world and you're trying to stand up for certain values that you have. You have to be able to stand your ground in times of stress. The person who's a word slicker and they're charismatic and they know how to use the words, they know how to use their body language, they know how to speak to people, they know how to influence, those people tend to win. They tend to go up on top. Those people tend to be the leader of the group and they rise and they tend to be the safe one. They tend to always have the job. They tend to always have the people around them. You want to ideally be as close to that group instead of the group that's being left behind because you haven't practiced, because you haven't simply read a book, or because you're afraid to talking on camera, let's say, you want to be able to put yourself under pressure. So by the time it becomes very real and it's a situation in which is life or death for you and your values, you already have that muscle. That's where we want to be ultimately, is that when it matters, not when we're exercising and we're practicing, when we're practicing, we can mess up all we want, but when it matters, when actually we need to stand up and we need to appear the best self, body language, tonality, our verbal fluency, how we express ourselves and how that's gonna influence the situation that you may be in, that you're able to execute on that and you're able to influence the situation in your favor. And that's ultimately what I want people to do. Going back to vlogging. So number one, vlogging, you're under pressure. It's great, it's great. Number two is that what I find when I talk to the camera and I look back at it, the key is that you do have to play back. If you cringe at watching yourself, then that means you probably notice certain things that you want to change about yourself. Fantastic, because it starts with awareness. It's hard to even look in the mirror and talk to yourself because you don't catch it as you're talking out loud. You're too busy trying to speak out loud that you don't necessarily catch the little nuances that you already do and that other people may notice, but you yourself may not notice. And 
there's a difference between you watching yourself versus somebody else watching you and telling you, hey, I noticed this, hey, I noticed that. Because when you watch yourself and you see where you're going wrong, then you're more motivated to actually fix that because you see it. There's no, or, or there's very little bias in that because you actually see what other people are seeing. Look, I use too many filler words. By the way, if you do, I have a video for that. I'll link it below. I tend to stall a lot. I tend to not want to look at the lens. I, I tend to look away all the time. So there's all of these little nuances that may happen besides verbal fluency, body language, tonality, your posture, how you position yourself, how comfortable or uncomfortable you feel. Because I promise you, if you feel uncomfortable in front of the camera, I said this many times before, you feel uncomfortable in front of the camera, you're self-conscious in front of the camera, you're most likely uncomfortable and self-conscious in front of people. It, it, it translates all together. So here it is, vlog yourself watch yourself back and notice the little things that you do. Ideally, if you're up to vlogging, you're doing all three. You're doing the FAS exercise, you're reading out loud, and you're vlogging. So by the time you come to vlogging, you've taken all of the exercise, you've taken the new words that you've been formulating with your reading out loud, and then now you're watching you. You're watching what you're doing good, always point out the good and what you can improve on. And it's very obvious and very blatant. <laughs> you know, it's not somebody trying to be mean to you. You are watching yourself. I highly recommend the vlogging as well. Please comment below. Let me know if this was helpful. And again, if you do want to do a one-on-one -on -one coaching, please don't even book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call unless you've been through this first. Because most of you, most of you, if you do all three and go up to the level three vlogging level, you are going to massively improve, massively improve. So comment below what your current score is. If you want to go back, exercise, go to the how to think fast and talk smart video and practice and practice and practice and know that, know that this is a muscle we're trying to exercise. So it's not going to change in three days. Please don't have that expectation. You have to look at it over the course of days, weeks, months, and that's how we improve our verbal fluency. All right, stay safe and have a great weekend, everybody.